This video is going to be a run through of the rules that I use when I've been playing my games. So over the last couple of months, hopefully you would have seen some of the matches that I've played. Um, the rules that I've used, I've gradually adapted some of them. So the base rules, obviously the ones out of the pamphlet that you get in the box sets, but I've obviously introduced some house rules. So the house rules themselves, basically, I've stolen them. Not, not all of them, some of them are my own ideas. But, but a lot of them are from the different Facebook groups. Uh, there's some really good ideas on there from, from some of the guys who play the cricket. So I've sort of, yes, stolen some of those and adapted some of those as well. So I'll go through those in a little bit of detail. I'll also be going through different sections, elements of the game. So things like bowling, batting, fielding, the different sort of stuff that you've got on the pitch, uh, as well as the ways you can be dismissed. Uh, there's, there's, there's numerous ways, and especially things like the LBW rule and also the run-out. Um, I've sort of adapted that a little bit. Um, the run-out rule I did steal from, from the Facebook group, but I think it makes perfect sense. And also the scoring as well. So the scoring, it, it isn't like what's in the pamphlet. Again, it's my own rules. And actually, I can remember using these rules when I was a kid because, again, it sort of made more sense to me. So I'll go through that in a little bit of detail as well. So... Less of the waffle, let's get on with the details, let's get on with the action, and uh, hopefully you might get something from it. So, let's crack on. Equipment on the pitch. So the wickets are cut down from the original base size to a smaller base size. This is to prevent the bales coming off if the ball hits the base, other than hitting the wickets. The backstop. That's there for the reach of the wicket keeper and stop spies. So you always see the backstop or the wicket keeper in that position. Bowling, nice and simple. Bowling figure, the wire and the ball can bowl around over the wicket, doesn't matter. But I also have this bowling figure with a catching base, so that allows caught and bowls. Simple. Batting, of course, we use the bat. Placement of the batting figure in line with the leg stump. That helps with LBW decisions. Far enough away from the wickets to avoid out it wickets. Field placings, these are based on the previous games I've played and the likelihood of where the ball's going to go if it comes off the bat. So, we have a long off, bowling figure, we look at the infield, we have silly mid off, point, gully, three slips, and the wicket keeper. A little further afield, we have deep third man, leg slip, fine leg. Those are my basic positions. So if you look on the leg side, in this particular case, you won't see any fielders. So potentially there are scoring opportunities in those areas. But like I say, this is purely to maximize when I tend to hit the ball and achieve a catch in the field. Scoring runs in the outfield. In this example, lung off is one measurement on the score determinator from the ball, so that would be a single. That's compared to the rule book that measures from the nearest batsman. So again, in this example, that's two. Two and a half lengths on the score determinator. So that would be two runs. For me, to reflect the game in real life, it makes sense that the fielder who is closest to the ball is where the score is determined from. As in the real game, he would be the one retrieving the ball and throwing it into the stumps. And that's the scoring method. There are two ways a batsman can be dismissed by a catch. The first, 
is if the ball is delivered, hits the bat direct and goes into the base of the fielder. The second, this is the ball's delivered, if it hits a finger on the hand and also goes into the base, that will be classed as out. However, if a delivery is made, the ball misses the bat, hits the bat in figure and goes into the base of the fielder, that will be classed as not out. That is the equivalent in the real game of the ball missing the bat, a glove, hitting the pad and going to the fielder, which would be not out. Run out rule. If the ball comes off the bat and finishes within the triangle, within the triangle on the score determinator, that is an opportunity for a run out. My run out rules, I'll take the bowling figure. Take the fielder out, put the ball in the hook at the back, and using the throwing action as if we were bowling, aim to the wicket. In that particular case, that's a not out. Then we resume to where we were, fielder comes back on, bowling figure goes back, and we resume play. W rule. If the ball is bowled, hits the leg and goes to the offside of the wicket, that will be classed as an LBW. If the ball hits the leg and goes down the leg side, that will be classed as leg buys. No ball. As you can see, the bowling figure overstepped the mark, so that would have been not out and no ball. And that is a typical example of a leg by. That's gone for four buys. And a wide would be bold if the ball is outside the crease lines. I'll put this score sheet together to assist in being able to put together the information sheets that you see within the videos that I make. So we start off with the order of the batsman within the team. And against that, we have the batsman's name. So Sadiq Mohammed, Andy Stovold, etc. for Gloucestershire. This first box is where the runs are placed as they're scored. Also in there, we'll go the method of being dismissed. So there could be a caught by so-and-so, bowled by so-and-so, and the runs at the end would be an accumulation of the runs scored in this section. We've then got an extra section, which has leg buys, no balls, buys, and I will be introducing wides. This section is just total, so overs would go in there, wickets would go in there, and then the total runs would go into there. Fall of wicket. Again, just to help doing the video and uh, the scorecards. So I've one, two, three, four, all the way through to 10. As the wickets fall, the scores go into those associated boxes. The bowling section. 
So we have the five bowlers, and they are numbered against the squad numbers that you would see in the batting order on their team sheet. All these numbers are represented on the fielder's bases. The boxes, these represent the different overs that are bowled. So in this particular case, Jarvis will be bowling the first over, and in this bottom box there, it's the batsman who's receiving the ball. So in this particular case, Sadiq Mohammed will be facing that ball, and whatever the score is off that delivery goes into that box there. This allows you to be able to swap round the batsman to get the scores correct. So for example, if it was a single, so there'll be one there for Sadiq Mohammed, a one in there for the score. Now the next batsman facing, because it's a single, would be Andy Stovold. So number two would go into that box. And it just keeps working through until the end of the over. These are the six deliveries in an over, and that's for any extra deliveries. Overs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. These boxes represent the total runs scored across the two overs to each bowler. And likewise, these boxes represent the wickets that are taken within those boxes also. Any wickets taken will be represented with a W, an associated delivery. So for example, if Sadiq Mohammed was batting, number one goes into there, and a W would be placed into the one there if he was out first ball. And that's reproduced throughout the bowling section within the overs boxes. There you have it, some of my oath rules. I hope you found it informative. Uh, by all means, if you've got different oath rules that you think could enhance my games, by all means, please drop them into the comments section. It's always great to hear from you, and it's always great to find out new ideas on how to improve the game. So, yep, put them in there. One other thing you may have noticed was a rather snazzy bowling figure with a pink base. These are produced by a guy off one of the Facebook groups uh, and he goes by the name on eBay of Holy Moly 1966. If you fancy adding something as smart and snazzy as that to your collection, look him up on eBay and uh, you'll find the information on there. Thank you for watching. Uh, like I say, I hope you, hope you enjoyed it and I hope you did find it informative. Uh, my next video, I'm going to do some uh, other bits and pieces. Um, I've still got the the video alive and flicking world cup at the moment but that may have changed by the time you see this video so you may see some uh, some more football videos uh, but i have got something in mind for the cricket side so stay tuned for that because that is uh, in my mind something could be quite interesting but uh, time will tell right okay enough enough of that and uh, like i say thanks for watching and uh, catch up soon bye for now